Thank you, Brother Chris. I thank the Lord this morning. I get all my stuff set up here. Y'all pray for me this morning. And I, I enjoyed Brother Campbell's talk, the very importance of Sunday school. It's a very important work that is to be done. And mine was on children, engaging our children this morning. And I praise the Lord for this. And he went on to say with the sweetest of spirit and interactive ways to teach them. And with children, you have to do it a little different way than an adult class. And this is my interactive. I'm going to add to it just a little bit here in a minute. But um, you pray for me. I, did, I wrote all mine down this morning. <laughs> but engaging our children. Engaging is means to involve, to attract, and to hold them. I would like to go to a few scriptures first. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I know we've all heard this scripture many times. This is in the Old Testament, and we might ask ourselves, what way is Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, trying to tell us to train up a child? Let us go on to the New Testament, to Paul's writings then. In Ephesus 6 and 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Nurture means to train, to educate, to rear. And admonition means to warn, to exhort. So to warn, to reprove mildly, to exhort, we have a responsibility as parents, grandparents, teachers, the ministry, from the Bible to engage, to train, to involve, to attract and hold, educate, warn, to reprove mildly our children in the Lord. This must, this must and will take prayer and study of God's word, as he was saying, talking about preparation. Keep these words and scriptures in mind as I go on now to talk about this topic, engaging our children. You walk into your Sunday school classroom, and there they are, your pupils, your students, some quiet, some very active. How do you look at them? Just keep them busy till class is over, or do you see them as young souls that God has placed in your class to gently guide them to know God and his love for them. I teach the very young children at the Crossville Church, and sometimes I may have one to three children, but no matter how few or how many, you still prepare the same, and you be ready for them. Talk with them, not to them, or you'll lose their attention. True knowing and having different things that pertain to your lesson to keep their attention can be trying but very rewarding. Things that we have done or I have done in my class at times, we have created a fish out of a box for them just to get into to show how God provided a fish for Jonah to teach him to be willing to obey God. We have planted seeds in cups and watch them grow to know the lesson about the sower, sowing the seed, which is the word of God, and watching that person grow in the Lord. And I'm going to show you a few little different things here this morning that my class that we do. When you have little children, when you have little children, you have to keep their attention from the start to the end, or you lose them. And we have, I'm going to talk about some more things that we have done, but your glue stick is always handy, and you're always having to make something because when they put their hands on something, it sticks in their mind, and so then they make their butterfly. It says, I am a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has gone, the new has come. 
and you begin to talk about your butterfly and how God has made you beautiful when he saves you. Then we go to another one in Acts 22 and 25 where many of you know the story about how Paul was on the island and how he began to build a fire. And when he put wood on the fire, how the snake came out. And then the children enjoyed this one because they were able to cut it out and make them a snake. I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> and Paul said, I have faith in God that he will watch over me and protect me. Then we have the story about Jesus coming to the well. When he came and the woman, he asked for in John 14. And he said, Thou shalt thirst again. And they colored these things, too. <coughs> and then while they color, we can begin to talk upon what they're coloring and talk about how he gave, she gave him water. Well, I think I got that back. Yes, I did. Shall never thirst. And they take all this stuff home with them, of course. <laughs> and then the parents have many things to keep up with. But this gets their attention. I would like to tell about a little girl in my class who at first didn't want to pray with me. When we would pray, when we'd start our lesson out, we always have prayer and hold hands. But never should we be discouraged. Just keep trying even harder, though through different lessons you may have. So one Sunday, it was on the love of God, and I believe it was the butterfly that morning that we were talking about. I believe in how much God listens to us no matter what age, and I ask her, do you want Jesus to come into your heart? She looked at me and she said, yes. So we held hands and bowed our heads and prayed. When we came out after class, I believe it was about the time Children's Church was taking money up from one of our missionaries at that time, that I came up front with her to take the offering and I told everyone that she had accepted Christ in her heart. And I could feel the presence of the Lord so strong that Sunday morning. She was about four years old at this time. And since then, she has fixed a prayer list that we did one Sunday in our class that we did along. And her granny says she keeps it by her bed. And what we had done, we fixed the thing. And I said, you put on this people you would like to pray for. And she told me who to write down. She can't write. She tells me who to write down. And I do. And then her granny came and told me she keeps this by her bed and she prays for them. God is faithful if we are. There is a scripture in Matthew 19 verse 13 says, Then were they brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. Verse 14 says, But Jesus said, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 15, and he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And I believe that Jesus must have prayed for those children. It was Christ's plan also that we see that children need to be included in our teaching, in our training, and our worship. Was it not Timothy, the word tells us in 2 Timothy 3 and 15, and that from a child, Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, it has been proven that we can learn a lot more at an early age before the world teaches us so many other things. 
Oh, that every child could be reached and taught the word of God. They can make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. These scriptures are true. If you ever look at teenagers, even after they get teens, those who have been taught from early, early age, even though they may be doing the same things, they're different. In the back of their mind, they know. They remember. They remember. Do not, do not think that that little child that's so little and restless in your class does not hear you. They do. They hear you. And they hear what you're telling them. And like that Sunday, she accepted the Lord. We have to keep on in a sweet spirit. Like he gave me uh, that topic, a sweet spirit, an ominous. But get on their level, you know. Get down on their level. Work with them. They will hear you. And they won't forget. They won't forget. They will not forget when they grow older. They may go away, but they don't forget. And it's harder to reach them when they get older and they've never known and been taught as a child. Not impossible, and we still have to strive to do this. But it's so much easier when they remember and remember what they heard when they were little. A few years ago, also, our lesson was on put on the whole armor of God. I had two students that morning in my class and had them to go on in, and I would be in the class in just a moment. I had made me a helmet, a sword, a shield, and shoes out of paper. And I put them on. I opened the door and I walked in. That got their attention quickly and they wanted to take pictures with their phone which I allowed them to do but it gave us a connection to begin talking about the spiritual armor what it meant those students were my two grandchildren Kelsey and Levi the things you learn at an early age you tend to remember the ones you are teaching now just remember you don't know what lies ahead of them and what they may need to remember in their lives later as they grow up. Pray, pray that God shows you each Sunday what you need. Thank God for Sunday school. I have not only taught the very young but older ones at times, and the questions they have are very important. Sunday school is a very great tool to reach the lost, and many times one teen or one child We'll ask another friend to come, and soon you'll be reaching out to more. One Sunday, we talked back and forth, questions being asked, answers given. You could feel the Spirit of God in that room so strong. And mind you, we're in a little uh, storeroom. <laughs> not very big. It's not a fancy room. It's just where the uh, DAV keeps their uh, food supplies and different stuff, and we set up a little table in there. But God's in there too. He is in there too. Uh, one Sunday, as we talked back and forth, questions being asked and answers given, you could feel the Spirit of God in that room so strong. And one student, she said, I need to go out of the class for a minute. I said, okay. But when she went out, she went to the pastor and she said, I need to pray. This student was Kelsey. And many times, other than this day, the presence of God was so strong, and you know God was working in their hearts. Sometimes God can lead you with a lesson, and just talking about the Word affects their lives. And in conclusion, I'm ending a little early too, but, but uh, in conclusion, people, we have a lot of hurting children, more now than ever before, with the divorce rate high, and not just that, but no marriage at all. It's not only the children, but the whole family is in need of God's help. What little time we have in the classroom, let's not let it be only by the book, but by the book, the spirit, and the compassion. Pray God will help you to reach that soul. A small child can affect the whole family. So thank you. Thank you.